on live again. Like if someone, if you like doing a lot of spiritual work or doing a lot of self-inquiry, being in the observer of your thoughts and being in the witness field, it can be quite a thing to go into a competitive job because um, you can get sucked in. You can get sucked into what, what the group are doing. You know, everyone's trying to score points who's, you know, with the boss, you know, <coughs> who's got the most creative ideas, who can make the most money for the company, whose project's going the best, and they're sort of like, everyone's trying to sort of promote themselves. And it feels to be a very sort of cutthroat, competitive, I used to work in the stock market, which is very much, probably even a bit worse than that, it might, it might be the same. But just a bunch of addicts just being, being, being dumb and competitive and cutthroat. But anyway, so, one of the things uh, that Hawkins said is actually the one who wins at the end of the day is um, if you're, as long as you're in, a, well, there's, there's a caveat, you know, caveat. If you're in a non-integrous company, if you're in a company whose, whose ethos is corrupt, yeah, then you cannot be, you can't be spiritual because the ethos is we only like people who are corrupt. So people who are honest, you just won't fit in that company. So just to make sure, if you're ever in a company where it's like, I don't know, you've got to knock on doors and sell vacuums, but you know they don't work. You know, you, if you just go to the boss, let's all get honest, you'll be sacked, basically. <laughs> That's not going to work. But if you're in a company which is um, integrous and wants to do a good thing, then the person who has the highest spiritual vibration will win in the long run. And the person who's in the most ego is going to lose. Because, you know, the one who's got the best long term, because when you're spiritually connected, you're always the best in a relationship or in a job in the long term. Even though addicts, you know, people who've got inflated egos can do a lot of stuff in the short term, you know, and burn the candle and be flashy, they always lose in the long term because they can't keep it up. And the person who quietly works and has the best creative ideas and brings the most harmony to the, to the job role and is reliable, in the long run, they always get promoted, you know, because the boss knows, you know, you know the people who are like, you know, the, you know like the person who's like trying to serve the company, you see, because when, when you're in the fields of spirit, you're not interested in self-promotion. You're interested in doing what's good for the company, what's good for the boss, so that the company can serve. So your, 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 your ethos is not self-centered. So you, you're, not, you're not a threat to the, to the boss. Because you're not like... The guy who's really, really flashy, who wants the boss's job, the boss knows that. You know, you know and he's not going to... He's not going to, you know, so... The one who's just trying to humbly serve the boss and the company, they're not a threat. They, they'll get promoted. So you just, you just have this thing of just being, you know, when, when people are being competitive, don't join in the competition. Go to the observer of that. You see, just let it go. You know, everyone's being competitive. I should be competitive. But if you go to the observer of those thoughts, then you'll just wash it off and you'll be, you'll be peaceful. Things may come to you creatively, I and mean, you can share them. But when you, when you share them from peace, it, people won't pick it up as an ego threat. Yeah? And once you're connected with that universal intelligence, with that peace and that serenity, and you're doing that, you know, even if the drop falls away, something better will come, you see. Because you're aligning, when you align with the higher fields of vibration, you're not in your ego, you're not in your fear-based thinking. As you go to the, you know, you, you know, that which is in alignment with what you are will be brought to you at that higher field. So don't worry, it's like, if your vibration goes higher than a relationship or a job, the job may fall away, but don't worry about that. You know, there's something better will come in alignment with uh, your higher vibration. I'll give, I'll give a quick story. Uh, from my own thing, because the higher your level of consciousness, the better your life will get. You'll get better rela romantic relationships, better work opportunities. I was, um, I was uh, an addict in the stock market, and that led to kidney failure and facing death, and I had spiritual experience. 
And I was working in a company which was very, very cutthroat, very, very sales orientated, very competitive, extremely aggressive. And I thought that was the best, you know, that was like, for me, that was the maximum of the ego. You know, you want those big showy jobs, you know, with, uh, you're going to different countries, you, you know, you're, I was a stockbroking analyst, you see, I was doing the, writing the research reports and having international trips. So it's a bit showy, but it's a very aggressive environment. And then that took me to the gates of death, because that was all ego, competition, let's show how good I am, let's get promotions, all of that stuff, it burnt out. And, uh, and then I was faced death, and then I thought, and then when I had that spiritual experience, near-death near spiritual experience, I realized that, no, life is about spirituality. I can't live as in competition and being, a very, you know, being very ego. I have to get something spiritual. And so I thought, well, you know, I, you know, I had this view that most of the companies in the stock market were probably aggressive and money orientated. But then I thought, there's got to be something spiritual in the stock market. And, uh, and I had had this spiritual awakening, even though I was very, very ill, and I just the start of it. And immediately I like, got a job in a fund manager. You know, it's a lovely place uh, near bank. I won't say the name of the company. You had marble toilets, and uh, in, you know, they had these huge marble toilets. You know, it was, it, was, it was much better than my old place, you know, which was just, it was just like a lunatic asylum. I shouldn't have said that. It was a nice place, but there would be some sick people yeah. in there, because I'm a camera. So, um, but this place, like, they would have people come and do yoga at lunchtime, you know. And, you know, they'd, they really wanted, like, there was this thing, there was social consciousness, like self-care. And they would go like, oh, oh, we're going off to, to the Globe after work to see some Shakespeare. And they were really treating the stuff, and they were like nice people, you know. And it's like, as my consciousness wasn't about ego, and get the most money and be the most showy and be the most competitive and ruthless, suddenly it's like as the, I, 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 I sinked into something which was beautiful, you know, a beautiful company. But eventually my health failed and I had to like have a total rethink. But that's what I mean by when you let go of the competition, when you let go of those ego motives, it allows a, a higher vibration to come in. Because before I was thinking, what's the most, I want to be the most competitive person and earn the biggest money. And then later I thought, no, I want to actually do the thing which is more in alignment with my spirit and my consciousness and my heart, and also do good in the world and earn money. And there are such things, you know, there's great jobs, there's great partners out there, but you have to first be that yourself before you can tune into that. Like in the stock market, it might be mostly greedy, money-oriented stuff, and while your consciousness is at that, that's all the jobs you'll get. Or if you're in a, or if you're on the romantic dating uh, scene, then all the partners you get will reflect where you're at. But as soon as you become spiritually more evolved, the jobs that come to you and the partners that come to you will match that vibration. You see, so that's that's the thing. So that's what I would say of transcending, transcend the competition. And you can do, you know, if you transcend the competition, uh, you'll become, you'll become, uh, you'll connect, you know, either, uh, what I forecast, either you'll become really, really good in that role and the company will love you, or that company is not at the right vibration for you. In which case, don't worry, because as you evolve, because it's, it's a, everywhere you're at is a mirror for what you have to transcend. Right? Every company you get, every romantic partner you get, every situation is showing the stuff in your ego that you need to transcend to get to the next level up. So if you go into a company and there's lots of competition and you're getting tri into that and you're becoming competitive and you're buying into the culture, that vibration, that is great because that's the thing you've got to transcend. Remember, your ego gets identified with things if they're interested, yeah? When there's no interest, it doesn't play the game, you know, like, uh, so I'm a food addict, but I'm 10 years absent by going to 12-step fellowship, you know, like, donuts would be like, the thing is, like, if there was donuts on the table, I'd be, like, just looking at the donuts, you know, and I wouldn't see anything else in the room, 
don't just be obsessed with donuts in the room. I forget everything else that happened today. I just be one can I get my hands on the donuts. That's the same thing as competition at work. When your ego sees that as a very interesting and something it needs to get, you know, it needs to compete on the game board because competition, it's seeing competition. So when you let go of that interest, you go to the observer or pray for a miracle to let go of that interest in competition, you start, you, actually you won't see it, you'll go to a higher field of love, you see. You won't notice that there's competition. You'll just be on the next vibratory wavelength. You'll be saying, oh, that's a, that person needs a bit of love over there. And actually, I've got a great intuitive idea that will make the whole company money and do good in the world. You're not tuned to that vibration of competition. But you have to let go because your ego is it's a shiny object. Competition is currently like a shiny object. So it's, it's on that vibration. So you have to transcend that vibration by letting go. When, when something is not, when there's no identification or interest in an ego pattern, it no longer exists for you. You, you don't see it. So, before, when I was in active addiction and there was a donut on the table, I'd just see the donut. But when you transcend the donut, I wouldn't even notice for the whole meeting that there was a donut. So that's what I would, that's what I would do. That's what I do with uh, tran transcending stuff. Go to the next vibration and trust the universe will take care of you.